wanted to talk today a bit about the role of trust in uh, pandemic response and um, what some uh, data are showing from uh, a recent study that I, I think was really um, illustrative of, of some of the issues that we're facing in our pandemic response. So this study came out in Lancet um, just uh, you know, a little over a week ago. And um, obviously Lancet is one of the most respected medical journals in the, in the world. And, and so this got some attention, but not sure if folks uh, saw any of the reporting on it. Uh, it was done by uh, this COVID-19 national preparedness collaborators. Uh, mostly that's uh, folks out of the University of Washington. And specifically, most of the analysis was done by their Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. It, that's probably the largest uh, institute of its kind in the world. It's uh, funded primarily by the Gates Foundation to, to look at global health uh, metrics and indicators. And this took um, a, a a broad view across the world uh, of COVID-19 um, data, mostly looking at uh, outcomes of country levels of infections uh, uh, per capita and also infection fatality rate, right? So how many people infected in that country uh, die of COVID-19? Uh, and the first thing they did is they looked at uh, a, a bunch of the demographic and, and other factors that we know uh, affect COVID-19, so standardized those across countries, right? So that corrects for things like, uh, as we've discussed before, South Africa has a much younger population on average than the UK or Denmark. And so um, by standardizing based on kind of world averages, they were able to essentially, you know, put every country equal. So let's assume every country has an equal age distribution. How did they do? And then in the next phase, they looked at uh, association of how those countries did from a standardized perspective against a bunch of different uh, variables um, to see what potentially affected um, the, the outcomes. And, and some of the things they looked at uh, for that phase two analysis, as you can see, is um, yeah, universal health care coverage, government spending on health care, how many bed, hospital beds they have. Uh, but they also looked at things like government corruption that was based on uh, a couple, uh, a uh, study, uh, actually two studies, I think, that were uh, done measuring government corruption, and then things like trust in government and interpersonal trust that uh, people had uh, responded in a couple of large global surveys uh, that they took. And what was interesting is you can see across all of these uh, various factors um, for um, <clears throat> societal and, and governmental um, um, indicators or characteristics. There were only a couple that seemed to have statistical correlation with how well a, a country did. One was um, health spending uh, per capita um, in both overall numbers and in government numbers. If you look at that where the arrow is pointing and then two down, those are indicators of uh, country health spending. So that makes sense, right? Countries that spend more on their health systems, country that spend more on their public health infrastructure uh, had um, better uh, numbers. So lower infection fatality rate uh, compared to other countries. But um, the, the other two areas where there were st uh, statistically significant associations were in these uh, government and social indicators. And we're going to blow up this area here to look at that specifically. So you can see that uh, the, the things that stood out, and these had much higher statistical correlations. So you see that dotted line means no effect, right? So if your error bars, the, the lines that go out from the dot, so the dot is the mean essentially, and the, the lines that go out are your uh, error bars or your confidence intervals. Um, and so Statistically, if your confidence intervals don't cross that dotted line, that means it's a very strong statistical association. And so you can see that uh, governments that had a higher corruption rating than others did worse, right? They were to the right of that dotted line, which means that their uh, infection fatality rate was uh, correlated with government corruption. Uh, the higher your corruption rating, the higher your infection fatality rate was compared to other countries. But what was even more interesting is on the opposite side, um, trust in government and trust between people had the strongest correlation of any indicators. 
Uh, and you can see that the higher your rating of trust in government and the higher your rating of trust between people, you had much lower infection fatality rate. And so then what they did is they analyzed, okay, let's, let's assume that every country in the world had a trust in government and interpersonal trust rating equivalent to that of Denmark. So Denmark is at about the 75th percentile uh, in terms of um, you know, government trust and trust in each other. So Danes are pretty happy and they, they like their government. Um, so they estimated if they had that um, relative um, rate of trust in government, uh, they would have reduced infection fatality rate across the globe by 13%. Right, so think about uh, you know where we are and how many millions of uh, fatalities there have been documented right now already. Uh, a thirteen percent reduction in, in that number would be huge. And then interpersonal trust was even more, forty percent reduction. So uh, if people um, you know reflected the same types of attitudes uh, again that that are uh, uh, marked by countries like Denmark with high interpersonal trust and high trust in government. Uh, at least by this statistical analysis, we would predict there would be dramatically lower uh, rates of, of deaths from COVID-19. Now, how does this translate into countries? Um, well, I think, first of all, this is kind of uh, just another statistical uh, correlation um, uh, looking at uh, regression analysis. And essentially, the steeper the line, uh, the higher the correlation between these factors. And you can see trust in government and our personal trust and uh, corruption ratings are uh, strongly associated with changes uh, in, uh, and this is uh, vaccine coverage, right? So that's makes sense that those countries with higher vaccination rates are going to have better infection fatality rates uh, and those vaccination rates are also associated with those things like interpersonal trust, trust in government, uh, and lower ratings of government corruption. So the less corrupt your government, the more likely you're going to have high vaccine uh, coverage. So how does this translate into uh, data across different countries? So we can see that in Europe, um, we've had, you know, a, a pretty significant differentiation in overall cumulative uh, fatality rates per capita over the course of the pandemic. So this is starting from February 1st, uh, you know, essentially when nobody had any fatalities from COVID in Europe and going all the way until today. And this is normalized for population. So it's per 100,000. <clears> you can see Italy has had the highest uh, of any of the, the major countries in Europe, the largest, the countries of largest population. And then I threw Denmark in there because of that, uh, uh, that, that reference point that they used in the study. Um, but you can see that almost all of these countries accumulated most of their deaths uh, early in the pandemic and then in last year's wave. And since August 1st, really since the Delta and uh, Omicron waves have hit, have acquired uh, a relatively low number of deaths per capita. So you can see that across these countries, deaths per capita since August 1st, Italy has had 37 COVID deaths per 100,000 population. Uh, and the rest are uh, clustered around 30, uh, uh, except Denmark, which is a bit lower, right, in the mid-20s, and the UK, which is the worst performer since uh, August 1st, as you can see, with 44 deaths uh, per 100,000. And, and that, I think, reflects a lot of what we've seen in the political and social climate in the UK, which has been similar to the US. There's been a ton of pushback against uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions, uh, and, and folks in the UK have essentially said we're done with the pandemic, as has the government. Now, fortunately for the UK, their vaccination rates are much higher than ours. So let's compare the worst performer among the major countries in Western Europe uh, with the US. Uh, and we can see that the US has overtaken the UK now in terms of overall COVID fatalities. But more strikingly and, and more sadly is that since August 1st, we've doubled their COVID deaths per capita. So we have 88 COVID deaths uh, per 100,000 since August 1st. And that means that since August 1st, we had a 48%, almost a 50% increase in our total deaths. So essentially, we've accumulated a third of our total deaths since the beginning of the, the Delta and Omicron waves had impact in, in fatalities. That's really amazing when you think about it. At that point, in August 1st, we knew that the vaccines were highly associated with uh, lowering hospitalization and mortality. And we knew that boosting at that point was essentially uh, protective uh, against hospitalization and deaths. And so really almost all deaths since 
before August, certainly since the spring, but definitely uh, since in the summer, we knew about the, the importance of boosters and folks who'd been vaccinated um, you know, more than five or six months prior and who had risk factors. You know, essentially, all of these deaths are completely preventable and shouldn't have happened, but, but we, we accumulated uh, another 50% uh, over uh, on top of what we already had. Now, let's compare that with some of the countries we've talked about have had very good performance and have high ratings of interpersonal trust and trust in their governments, by the way, Japan and South Korea. Japan has accumulated four deaths per 100,000 since the beginning of August, South Korea nine. So essentially Japan has done over 20 times, uh, well, 20 times, yeah, over 20 times better than we have uh, over the last six months. Uh, and Japan's rate of boosting is actually not uh, tremendously good. They got a very late jump on vaccination and they've had a late jump on, on just being able to get enough vaccine to boost their population. So this is all again, based on non-pharmaceutical interventions, uh, which is you know really the, the foundation of how we manage uh, these epidemic waves, um, you know, above the kind of the, the foundational base of vaccination, which is uh, ultimately the way to, to get your population uh, out of these uh, high morbidity and mortality epidemic waves. So I think really interesting data that, that highlights some of the trends that we've been following for a, a long time in this group. And, and unfortunately, don't, uh, don't portend very uh, different results for us in the near future, as uh, I think everybody's aware that uh, nationally are. Uh, levels of trust in, in government and institutions and our trust in each other is, uh, is really at a low point in most of our lives. Um, that's all. Thanks, Shelley.